Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome here to the Launchpad and our live launch coverage of SpaceX's Tranche 1 Transporter uh, Transport Layer C mission for the United States Space Force Space Development Agency, the SDA. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the Launchpad Network and here at TLP. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. We're glad to have you joining us live here tonight. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share the stream, and invite people to join us. We're going live now, just past that 40-minute uh, mark in the countdown, L-37 minus minutes, 12 seconds and counting, as SpaceX should have begun the go-no-go -no -go for propellant loading on Falcon 9 at this time. Uh, SpaceX didn't put their pre-launch timeline on their website for today's mission, so we don't know if they're doing anything a little bit differently, but generally speaking, at that 39-minute mark is when that go-no-go -no -go is set to occur. Tonight's mission, as I said, a mission for the United States Space Force, Space Development Agency, and for the... Well, that was a tongue twister. The Proliferated Warfighter Space Architecture. This is the Tranche 1 Transport Layer Constellation, which provides assured, resilient, and low-latency military data and connectivity worldwide uh, for the warfighter platform in, uh, via low-Earth orbit satellites. On board today, we've got 21 payloads going into polar orbit. The satellites were manufactured by Lockheed Martin, and uh, unlike most missions for the Space, uh, space Force, uh, we actually have an idea of what uh, today's payload looks like thanks to an image that came in from Lockheed Martin. So this is what the stack uh, looks like for today's mission. You can see the 21 satellites uh, stacked on there on that uh, adapter ready to go into a fairing for Falcon 9, which is set to launch now in just 35 minutes and 50 seconds from now. So great to be able to bring that up and uh, show you that uh, what it looks like on board. See those satellites that are heading up? It's interesting to get to see military satellites. Normally anything Space Force generally seems to be classified, but a nice thing to see here today. Now I'm going to run through a little bit more about what we know about today's Falcon 9 booster and what we can expect during the flight. But first and foremost, we got people tuning in from all over the world. We're glad to have you here. We got Mike watching from Columbus, Ohio. Monte is in Ann Arbor in Michigan. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, we got Maria in Devon, England. I'm broadcasting from our TLP Canada studio and HQ. If you haven't yet, take a moment, gauge that like button, share the stream, and invite people to join us. Tonight's Falcon 9 is booster 1093 going for its seventh flight on a 34-day turnaround. This booster previously supported an earlier SDA tranche uh, launch as well as five previous Starlink missions. Tonight is going to land on the drone ship, of course, I still love you, which is, of course, stationed downrange in the Pacific Ocean. Now, as usual, for launches coming out of Vandenberg, there is a possibility that residents of Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, and Ventura counties may hear one or more sonic booms during today's launch, even though it's not a return to uh, landing uh, site. But uh, that obviously is dependent on your weather conditions, your elevation, and things like that. Now, we don't always get to uh, bring up a lot of news uh, during these uh, launch coverages, but there is a little bit to talk about here today about the future of Vandenberg. Excuse me, don't you love when a sneeze just won't come? Excuse me, guys. L minus 33 minutes, 53 seconds, and counting till launch. I was saying we got a little bit of news about the future of Vandenberg here today. The Department of the U.S. Air Force has approved SpaceX's proposal to increase its launch cadence of Falcon 9 from Vandenberg up to a total of 100 launches per calendar year. The other exciting thing is there is going to be some new developments coming to Vandenberg as the Department of the Air Force has now officially authorized Falcon Heavy capabilities to be added to Slick 6, SpaceX's second launch site at Vandenberg that will be under development. They also have authorized SpaceX to build two new landing zones south of the Slick 6 launch pad to support these Falcon Heavy missions. Now, if you're wondering about what Slick 6 is, Slick 6 is that absolutely beautiful pad that humanity never got the incredible witness of a space shuttle launch 
from Slick Six. Uh, ULA took it over for a while. That is where Delta Four Heavy launched from uh, down there. A gorgeous pad. But now SpaceX has the lease for it. And from what we are hearing, we are expecting to see some major changes there. Unlike when Delta Four Heavy took it over and uh, a lot of the, the buildings from shuttle were retrofitted or kind of just left in place we're hearing that it might uh, end up being a, a much bigger visual change uh, than we've seen in the past and uh, unfortunately some of those shuttle structures uh, may be eliminated with the tower obviously already was uh, but we'll see what that looks like over the coming months as SpaceX really gets ready to ramp up their cadence uh, of activities launching from Vandenberg so it was something we were talking with our Rocket Chaser team about that uh, they were actually expecting the launch to uh, possibly be slowed down for the rest of this year uh, as they were, uh, excuse me, just getting information in the back channels. We were wondering if we were going to see Vandenberg launches slow down for the year as they were approaching the limit of how many flights they were allowed per year. But with this extension, uh, that does open them up to, to have more capabilities. Uh, for it, hearing in the back channels that SpaceX is currently in a hold during prop load for tonight's flight. We'll see if we can get any more information uh, on that, but uh, that just coming in for it. The, the countdown clock on SpaceX's site has held at T-37 minutes uh, and 31 seconds. Now, that would be right about the point where they're supposed to begin propellant loading of a Falcon 9. So uh, we do not have a, a guaranteed kind of confirmation if this would uh, mean a, a, a delay or a scrub here tonight. So we'll uh, stay tuned for that uh, as we wait for an update uh, from SpaceX either officially to the T-0 uh, or their website uh, as we stand by. This is one of the, the things about SpaceX is we don't necessarily always get the information, but uh, we will we will get it eventually. They need to make sure, of course, that the rocket is safe, the vehicle safe. Obviously, work any issues if there is one, um, and, and and go from there. So, excuse me with the little bit of a hiccup there. So we were uh, wondering what uh, this flight was going to look like. Uh, if they were able to launch here today, they would be launching in a southern trajectory. This pad's turnaround uh, fastest turnaround would be two days. 21 hours. Uh, that's the record for Slick 4E. The last launch from Vandenberg took place just a few days ago. It took place on October 7th. Uh, wow, it's been about a week actually since the last one, which is quite interesting when we had uh, almost four launches between two Florida launches. It's now kind of swapped. Uh, we've had uh, more launches from Florida and Texas. A little bit of time off for Vandenberg, but uh, they're out on the pad here again as we await uh, an update on whether they will be continuing their their countdown here today uh, or if uh, we are in uh, one of those situations that they have begun the process. If they began fueling and then had to enter a, a hold, that generally does mean it would be the, the end of what we would expect for the opportunity here today. But uh, there's always the capability that there could be uh, a, a recycle if they hadn't begun fueling just yet. So we are going to keep uh, an eye out for any information that we have for that. But while we have this time, we'll take a minute, answer your guys' comments and questions. You can send those in the chat by taking me at the launch pad, and I'll work on answering those live to the best of my ability while we uh, await for some sort of update from SpaceX. Uh, William, uh, any considerations of what we may be looking forward to for subsequent missions, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 for Starship? Um, yeah, big question is how quickly can they get Pad 2 online uh, with a, a full stack of the first ever V3 ship and V2 of Booster? So that's uh, ultimately one of the big things, testing the pad, testing all the new uh, connections, the new chopsticks, the new fuel systems. Uh, a lot has to happen to get ready for Flight 12. I would expect 12 and maybe 13 to be pretty similar to what we saw with 10 and 11. You know, trying to get to that point of all the way bringing it down. 
Um, and then at that point, Elon has hinted that, you know, flights 14, 15 maybe in there, they could consider looking at trying to catch the ship, but they need to prove that V3 works. And now, if you're a person that looks at patterns, V1 and V2 of Starship followed a pretty identical pattern of the first few flights not going too hot. And then by the last couple of flights, they kind of nail all of their things. So uh, I don't think anyone's expecting flight one, uh, flight 12 or flight 1 from uh, pad 2 uh, to go all that well. Um, we'll be pleasantly surprised if it does. Um, they, they've learned a lot, but it is a whole new system. So we'll have to wait and see. After that, I would say hopefully by the later teen missions, we stretch into orbital flights where they may be able to start deploying Starlinks. Uh, the first ever V3 Starlinks into orbit. So uh, that would be the biggest things looking forward to with uh, them in uh, the future of Starbase. And of course, you can follow along with everything and the current status of Starbase uh, on our Starbase Now. That's our 24-7 stream where we have our live cameras and bring you live updates uh, to uh, the developments that are happening down there at Starbase. So thanks for sending that in. Do some more shoutouts while we got some time here. We got Princess in Canada, Stewart's in Virginia. We got Stubb in the middle of Oklahoma, Uncle Yukon's in the eastern U.S. Bufford is in Georgia. We got Ian John in the U.K. in Rochdale. Welcome. Gerald's in Port, uh, Port St. Lucie. Welcome. And Grifter is in the California launch area. So hopefully you'll be able to see today's flight. Obviously you can see on the radar there... Uh, Images coming in from the, the GO satellites. Lots of clouds in the area. If you are just joining us, we are currently in a hold uh, on the countdown from SpaceX. We're awaiting any sort of update uh, on what that means for today. They held the clock at T-37 minutes and 31 seconds. Normally, the GO no-go for prop load is at T-39 but we have not had an update as of yet on that timeline. Let's see if we get any notifications from SpaceX on anything while we uh, await that update. We're answering your guys' comments and questions. You can send them in the chat, taking me at the launch pad. Connecting with our teams in the back channel. If this was an instantaneous launch window, uh, then we would be done for the day. Our team's just checking the filings to try to confirm if this was an instantaneous launch window or not for you guys. So bear with me just a minute while they do so. Uh, appreciate the, the TLP crew being online for these things, helping uh, get you guys the latest information. Uh, based on what we're seeing, there was no time uh, window uh, on the, the launch information. It was just this set time, which is generally what we would see for an instantaneous launch time. Um, and generally, if it was an instantaneous launch time, then there's, uh, there's no chance of them picking up the countdown here today. But we are trying to await to see any sort of confirmation from SpaceX on what that would mean for a possible turnaround time. Um, it does say if they need, they have a backup opportunity tomorrow. That backup over opportunity is at 4.03 p.m. Pacific. Again, tomorrow's launch time says 4.03. Uh, and it says the backup opportunity is at that exact time. So, um 99.99% sure this means we're an instantaneous launch window and that we would be done for today. So with that, I don't want to waste your guys' time. Uh, you wouldn't expect us to, to do that or want to do that. So uh, with it being an instantaneous launch window, we are going to uh, sadly assume that we have gone into a scrub uh, situation. Uh, and hopefully we will get to see 
this vehicle launched tomorrow. We have no cause on uh, what has uh, led to this uh, this hold in the countdown right after that go no go for prop load. But uh, we're going to conclude our live coverage here this afternoon, this evening, depending where you're joining us from. If uh, you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage. And make sure you join us over on the TLP Discord where you can get alerts as well for last minute stream notices. But for now, from our TLP Canada studio, my name is Zach. And we will see you guys next time because space is better together. Good night.